In Season 5 of The Clone War, Ahsoka Tano, the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker, was accused of bombing the Jedi Temple and ultimately was expelled from the Jedi Order. Because of this, she wasn't around to save Anakin from his descent to the dark side of the Force. But what if instead of Ahsoka, Anakin was accused of bombing the Jedi Temple? Let's start this right after the bombing. The hangar bay was just bombed, killing 6 Jedi, many clones and causing devastating damage. The Jedi Council assigned Anakin and Ahsoka to the investigation, who spend a day or so searching for clues about who the attacker is. Ahsoka starts by interviewing the survivors, and one of them tells her that they believe it was Jakar Bomani who bombed the temple, as he's been missing for days. Anakin and Ahsoka find the clue they've been looking for, and track down his wife Letta, and after careful investigation, find out she was feeding Jakar nanodroids, which was itself the cause of the explosion. She was taken into custody and sent to prison for her crimes. But the next day, Leda calls for Anakin in prison, saying she will only talk if it's to Anakin. In the original timeline, Ahsoka is the one she called, but in this story, it will be Anakin. When Anakin visits, Leda begins to tell him the truth, that it was a Jedi who taught her how to make the bomb and feed it to her husband. Anakin desperately asks her who the Jedi was, but as she goes to say, Letta is hoisted up into the air and force choked to death with nothing Anakin do and makes him look extremely guilty. It wasn't Anakin who force choked Letta, but actually Barriss Offi. Fox and other members of the Coruscant Guard walk in and goes to put Anakin under arrest, but the Jedi acts quickly in the moment, pushes Fox back with the force and darts past the other clones. He looks around him as there are clones lying dead, making him look even more guilty. Clones rush around to capture him, but Anakin dodges all of their blasts to fire and makes his escape with the use of his lightsaber. He goes straight home to tell Padme what's happened, who can't believe it. They check the news and there's a warrant out for Anakin's arrest. They discuss what to do, Padme obviously believing that Anakin is innocent, and they decide the best course of action is for Anakin to use his friendship with the Chancellor to his advantage and manages to sneak into Palpatine's office to speak with him. When Palpatine heard of the situation, he decided this opportunity was too good to miss. None of this ordeal was his doing, but he'll twist it to his advantage. He's been planning to turn Anakin to his side for years, and this is the perfect moment. He'll have to bring his plans forward. When they meet, Palpatine tells Anakin that Ventress might be behind the attack on the temple in attempting to frame Anakin. Palpatine knows she's on the planet and sends Anakin to the lower levels of Coruscant to search for her. Meanwhile, the Jedi Council had been forced to send out a search to find Anakin and bring him in. Obi-Wan obviously knows he's innocent, but other members of the Council, like Mace Windu, are not convinced. Anakin finds Ventress on the lower levels of Coruscant, and they face off, Anakin accusing her of being behind everything, but she hastily maintained her innocence. Anakin doesn't listen, and bests her in battle, rendering her unconscious. But as Anakin goes to grab her, Palpatine sneaks out from the shadows behind Anakin and knocks him unconscious and sends in an anonymous tip to the police regarding his whereabouts. Skywalker wakes up in handcuffs with police all around him, accompanied by crates and crates of nanodroid explosives, the same that were used in the temple bombing. He looks over to one of the police screens and sees footage of him talking with Ventress. This doesn't look good. Mace walks up to Anakin and doesn't say anything, but in his mind feels satisfied. He never liked Anakin and always knew something was up, and now he has finally caught him in the act. He visibly shakes his head and grabs Anakin by the cuffs and drags him away. Before they take him to prison, they stop by the temple, where the council holds an official ceremony, accusing Anakin of being guilty of his crimes and expel him from the Jedi Order. Anakin is then taken to prison, where he is visited by Obi-Wan, Padme and Ahsoka, who all believe that Anakin didn't do this, and all swear to work all day and night until they can prove his innocence. Anakin's trial is the next day, and they work tirelessly until then. Palpatine secretly travels to the prison to meet with Ventress, but he doesn't meet with her as the Chancellor, but his Darth Sidious. She was shocked when she saw him, and wondered if he had come to finish her off, but that wasn't the case. Sidious offered Ventress a place by her side, and revenge against her former master Dooku, whom she hated with all her heart. All she must do is testify tomorrow in the trial of Anakin Skywalker, that she and Anakin conspired against the Jedi together, and that Anakin is indeed guilty of bombing the Jedi Temple. And if she doesn't, she will pay with her life. Ventress thinks about this. It's dangerous to testify, because she'll be in front of the entire Republic, and can risk her safety. She weighs up the pros and cons in her mind, 
but ultimately believes Sidious's offer is the right way to go, as she will no longer have to stay in hiding. She nods and agrees to the proposition. Palpatine visits Anakin next, now as the Chancellor and friend. He tells Skywalker that he believes him and will do whatever he can to get Anakin out of prison, but tells Anakin a lot of it is out of his hands, that likely tomorrow he will be declared guilty. He bends down close to Anakin and tells him the rumors that he's heard, that Ventress will testify against him and tell the courts they conspired together to blow up the Jedi Temple and that he is in fact guilty. This enraged Anakin, who can't believe why she would do this and thinks someone must be pulling her strings. Palpatine asks him who he thinks it could be. Anakin pauses and says it could be Mace Windu or other Jedi that are jealous of him. Anakin's always been wary that he's a target of jealousy and Windu has never liked him and maybe now they've made an effort to get rid of him. Palpatine agrees with Anakin and tells him that the Jedi have always been jealous of him, seeing him as a threat to their own power. He tells Anakin he is the Chancellor and therefore must abide by the laws of the Republic, but he's loved Anakin like his own son and will do anything to keep him safe and will make sure he doesn't stay in prison long, even if he has to break him out. They hug and Palpatine tells Anakin to hang in there and Skywalker thanks him for all he's done. Palpatine turns and walks out with a smirk on his face. The trial of Anakin Skywalker happens the next day. This was a big deal. Anakin was known around the galaxy as the hero of the Clone War and one of the strongest Jedi in the Order and his so-called betrayal was not little news. But the trial went as expected. Palpatine forced to read out all of Anakin's alleged crimes and ask him whether or not he's guilty and Anakin stands firm, standing by his innocence, saying he's not guilty. Ventress walks in next and does exactly what Sidious ordered her to do. She testifies that Anakin aided her in the bombing of the temple and their overall plot against the Jedi. Shock and horror grasp the courts as they couldn't believe what Ventress was saying. Ventress's testimony alongside all evidence against Anakin, security recording of him killing Letta and him being found with the same nanodroids used in the temple bombing sways the court's opinions against him. The council were forced to include their own opinion and Windu on behalf of the council condemn Anakin's actions, state that he is no longer a Jedi and will leave his fate up to the courts. Anakin was disgusted by what Windu was saying. The council should believe one of their own and back Anakin if he proclaims he is innocent. To Anakin, they obviously do not care and he begins to believe they are the ones behind all of this. Anakin is deemed guilty and sentenced to life in prison, as well as Ventress sharing the same fate, but in her mind, this will not be for long. She was a war criminal and this was only one of her crimes. Obi-Wan and Ahsoka yell to Anakin that they'll continue to fight for him and Anakin makes eye contact with Padme, who has tears running down her face. Now is when Palpatine begins his endgame. He successfully turned Anakin against the Jedi, who strongly believe they or some of them are behind his imprisonment. Now to turn him to his side, he must break the connection to the love and happiness in his life, and this involves his wife and closer friends. He begins by using his position as Chancellor and Master of Count Dooku, the leader of the Separatists, to orchestrate the Clone War in a way where Obi-Wan and his squadron is sent on a mission where the targets were clear and not seen as a heavy or dangerous mission. But in fact, the Separatist forces were underreported and Palpatine actually increased the number of droids and Separatist forces. Ahsoka was reassigned to Obi-Wan and she was also on the mission. The result was Obi-Wan, Ahsoka and their squad was outnumbered 50 to 1. They fought until the last second where they were completely backed into a corner and ultimately all lost their lives. Palpatine visits Anakin the following day and breaks the news to him. Anakin is overcome with grief and sorrow, two of the closest people in his life dead. This is where Palpatine starts his manipulation. He tells Anakin that if the Jedi Council hadn't put him in prison, he could have been there to protect his friends, that their deaths are the Jedi Council's fault. Anakin agrees, still overcome with despair. Palpatine continues, telling Anakin that they must be held accountable. He reaches in close and tells Anakin that he knows why the Jedi Council turned against him. He looks up confused and asks Palpatine why who tells them they not only fear his power, but fear whether he would stick with them when they made their final move. Anakin's still confused, but Palpatine continues on, telling Anakin that his officers have reported secret intel that the Jedi plan to take over the Senate and Republic from the Chancellor and lead the Republic how they see fit, cast aside democracy that the galaxy has fought so hard to maintain for a thousand years. It all clicks in Anakin's mind, and he believes what his Chancellor and friend is saying. Palpatine offers Anakin an opportunity for revenge 
to stand by his side, help him foil the Jedi's plans and destroy them. And only then can he live freely with his wife and live the life he's dreamed about. Anakin's eyes go wide, surprised how Palpatine knows about Padme. But the Chancellor smiles and says that he always knew. He's seen the way he looks and acts around her. This comforts Anakin. Only a true friend would notice this. But Palpatine tells Skywalker that in his current state, he isn't powerful enough to foil the Council's plans, that he must help him learn. He tells Anakin that his mentor taught him everything there is to know about the Force, including the dark side, and he can help Anakin learn the secrets of the Force that the Jedi Council were keeping hidden from him. Anakin was slightly hesitant about Palpatine knowing the ways of the dark side. He's always been taught that the dark side was the root of all evil, but this teaching was from the Jedi, who's completely turned their back on Anakin, so starts to wonder whether he can trust the Jedi's so-called wisdom. In his mind, he can fully trust Palpatine, a close friend and mentor who's worked so hard to help him and therefore his intentions must be pure. He agrees to learn the dark side from Palpatine during his time in jail and over the coming weeks begins learning aspects of the force that the Jedi deem forbidden. During this entire time, Padme continues to visit Anakin. She notices that he's been changing slightly and is more emotional and angry than usual but she thinks it's just because of Obi-Wan and Ahsoka's deaths. But little does she know, Palpatine's training is slowly changing him, corrupting his innocent mind with the dark side of the Force. She continues to work day and night to prove her husband's innocence, but with Obi-Wan and Ahsoka gone, she's finding it harder and harder. After weeks of training and a considerable rise in Anakin's power, his affinity for the Jedi severed and he's now a Sith. Palpatine tells him, it's time. The Jedi Council were close to making their move against the Senate but they'll act before them. He tells Anakin about the contingency orders, especially Order 66, the secret he had installed into the clones for this very event, the Jedi's betrayal. Together they plan Order 66, and finally for Palpatine, the time has come. Palpatine executes the order whilst in Anakin's cell, and he breaks Skywalker out, as together they head towards their destiny. But on their way, they stop by Ventress's cell. The door opens as she sees Sidious, and she believes he's finally carrying out his side of their deal. But as Anakin comes into view, eyes deep yellow as Palpatine offers her up to Anakin as revenge, and she marks the death of the first Force user by Anakin's blade during Order 66. Together they head towards the Jedi Temple and completely sack it. No Jedi on Coruscant survived the purge. The entire Jedi Council was decimated, including both Yoda and Mace Windu, who were no match for Palpatine and Anakin, who in this timeline had weeks to learn to control the dark side, and not let his emotions and arrogance get the better of him. Palpatine returns to the Senate to explain the nature of the Jedi's betrayal and declares the Republic will be transformed into the first galactic empire. Sidious has done it, the galaxy and Anakin Skywalker was now his. Anakin heads back to his home, to Padme, who was surprised to see him. But Anakin tells her everything about the Jedi being behind putting him in jail, them attempting to take over the Senate, but together he and Palpatine stop their tyranny before they could do so, and now together, will ensure the galaxy will have peace and order. But Padme rejects what Anakin has become and done. The man she knew wouldn't kill innocent Jedi and children in cold blood. She turns and begins to walk away, and Fury takes over Anakin. He did all of this so he could live his life freely with her, but now she turns her back on him. He begins to force choke her, squeeze the life out of her, but as he goes to finish her off, he puts her down a flicker of light side, still alive inside Anakin. But Palpatine walks in towards Padme, telling Anakin that she betrayed him after everything he has done for her, that Anakin deserves better, someone loyal, and she must pay for her treachery. Palpatine ignites his lightsaber and passes it through Padme as she collapses to the floor on her last legs of life. Anakin rushes over, cradling her body, as Palpatine calls Anakin his son, tells him that it was the only way, and that now, the future is theirs, and theirs alone. Anakin was too far gone, too corrupted by the dark side. He stands and exits with Palpatine, as they walk side by side, the Sith victorious. If you enjoyed this video, you have to watch What If Anakin Was Trained By The Force, or What If Anakin Killed Palpatine Animation. Please leave your comments on what you thought of the video, I love reading them. Please like and subscribe, may the force be with you, and I'll see you all next time.